check out this free video and make sure you hit like and subscribe. All right, what's the latest on this Vince McMahon documentary? You tell me. What, what, what have you seen? I'm up through five. Okay. Any comments? I don't think anything? I have anything to add that uh, hasn't been said probably a million times by you on this show. Okay. I haven't seen the sixth one, and that's the one that everybody says don't uh, make a judgment till you've seen the last one. Yeah, the sixth one, the sixth one, and the second one to me are the two best. Two, five, and six. Two, five, and six are the best. Um, five. You know the. The, the the Vince Shane stuff, um, I mean, it's like people that are saying like that that there's nothing new. It's like the Vince Shane stuff is totally, um, you know, done in a way that I've never seen done before. It's very very interesting. Um, you know, it's not like there's any news that we're going to be broken. But no, well, news you had you had news in the Observer when you said that the reason that he left the first time was he tried to take over. Yeah, I had that years ago. I don't. I don't. Apparently, you didn't because a lot of people were like, "What." We oh, need no, more I, on this story. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I I reported that uh, I reported that years ago when what he happened? came back. Um, he he, well, you know, Vince was, you know, he wanted he he was I, he was right about the age Vince was when Vince took over from his father, uh, maybe older even, and just thought that uh, it was his time, and he tried to. Uh, it was it was when he got fired, you know. He rallied some people, or he told, you know, he basically did what Jesse did and got stooged off by telling the wrong person um, who went right to Vince, and they fired him, you know, and, uh, you know, they, they, you know, portrayed it differently, of course, and he was gone for a long time until, you know, I mean, Linda always wanted him back, and then finally, um, I remember, when he came back, was there an injury that year or something? That they needed, you know, that it, it just whatever it was when he came back to wrestle Undertaker. I don't remember exactly, but you know they brought him back. It was gigantic when they brought him back. I mean, they sold a lot of tickets for his show, um, so it wasn't like um, you know his his coming back was a gigantic thing. But yeah, that's, wait, that's was was uh, episode five the one where Vince told Shane to stab him, or was that episode six? Um, I don't remember the episode, but that was Paul Heyman. Okay. Who said that? If that was episode five, I actually haven't seen five yet. I may have only seen four. Okay. Um, so the story on that... Because I certainly didn't hear that story from what I watched. Yeah. Well, a story. I mean, it's... it's Stories... Stuff close to that happened many times. It's not like this was like a one-time out-of-the-blue thing. But, I mean, it's not like Vince, Vince told him to take a knife and stab me. I mean, like... I mean, that that, that you know... As as the story goes, that happened on an airplane, and it really happened. But I don't know. Obviously, I went on the airplane. But the idea of Vince saying stuff, you know, similar things to Shane at different times, you know, that's, you know, that's kind of well known, you know. And they, you know, they talked about, um, you know, Shane wanting to buy UFC, and Vince goes, "Well, if you want to buy it, buy it." But at the time, okay, so the time, that's what Vince said, right? But the time this was going down, which would have been 97, 98, when Myra, this was not, um, you know, when uh, the Fertitas owned it, it was when Myra Witz owned it, and it was, you know, taken off a cable and it wasn't doing well. Um, and they, they, I remember Dave Isaacs, who was running the thing, and, and I think the guy in the negotiations, and he told me, you know, it's like they, you know, they were pretty sure that, that they were going to take it. And then Vince just backed out of the deal, and Shane wanted the deal. And Vince goes, well, if you want it so bad, why don't you buy it? But at the time, I mean, Shane didn't have, like, tons of money at the time. It's 1997, 1998. Shane got, Shane and Stephanie got a lot of money when, when they went public. At that point, he probably would have if it had happened later. Although, when Pride was around, you know, but Pride, you know, when Pride was sold to UFC, the price was, like, in the $60 million range. And, you know, um, they came to to. WWF and they were you know it was not a secret when they came there to sell and um, you know WWF turned that one down too and at the time like 60 million like Vince could have bought it for 60 million but Vince you know turned it down but Shane didn't have like 60 million dollars to do that I mean he could have gotten a team together and Shane wanted to buy Strike Force at one point um, and I'm not sure exactly what happened but it just didn't happen and um, so those were, you know, his, you know, I, I, he, I think he wanted also when they did that ECW offshoot, I know that Shane wanted to actually be in control of that one. 
you know, and, and have it not on television, just have it on the internet, you know, something like that. That was kind of an idea that he had, and uh, you know, but they didn't put him in control of that one either, and they wouldn't put it on the internet and, and not television. They thought at that point, you know, we're talking, was this 2006? It might have been early to be able to take something and put it on the internet and then tour with it. Because the idea was to tour with it, you know, as a, as a third group. And, you know, even with television, when they tried to tour with it, it uh, obviously it only lasted a couple months touring because it didn't draw. So, you know, I think it drew right, at, right off the bat maybe, but, you know, didn't keep, it didn't sustain. And, and I remember Linda going like temporarily where, where, where this, she was still with the company at the time. Temporarily, we're going to, um, you know, put it on with SmackDown, but it's going to be touring again soon. And of course, that's like uh, WWE Europe. You know, it's like, um, maybe it'll happen someday, but man, that never happened again. We did, in fact, by popular demand, watch Ready to Rumble. The champion is some fat loser. Yeah, he's a completely talentless, no athletic ability, can't wrestle, it, broke bum that walked out on his wife and kid. But he and was he's over. the world champion. He and was. In the he, movie, the well, yeah, but that's is, a microcosm of wrestling, sadly. Yes. He feels so bad about drinking this entire slushy that cost $1.26, and he, he sticks his finger in his asshole and walks up to the clerk. Lancey and, Lance is dying. How could the movie be so bad? I'm not going to fault the man for that. Of all the things in the movie. I thought okay. for sure you were going to say you'd done this before. There's a reason I'm not going to fault the man for that. I, I just think with all the porta potties and farting in this, that I think Vince McMahon was a secret uh, producer on this film. Had to have been. So then we get the, the Shermanator. He's played a WCW arcade game. He uses some internet sleuthing to find the personal information of Jimmy King. He's searching the internet. Can find out anything on here. This movie is so antiquated. Every Nitro Girl is in a Nitro Girl outfit, except for this girl. And they had they her dance in something to totally different. Out, Brian, like the captain. So we're so stupid. I got it. Captain yes, Stabbing. If you're watching this film, you're that stupid. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but I was also insulted by the fact they hired Michael Buffer. To announce the Royal Bash, the fake-ass Royal Bash. $24 million budget. Wow. And probably 500000 of that went to Michael Buffer. It made twelve. You know, we he should unveils. mention, this This cage match is the triple-decker cage of doom. Everybody buried it. It was horrible. Everybody hated it. And, uh, and so they decided to make a movie. And what is the final battle? It's another goddamn triple-decker cage match. This would be like in, in 2010 if like TNA made a movie and the final the final match was a reverse battle royal. They throw powder in someone's face, DDP's I think or somebody's, and the dude just looks and goes, "It doesn't work." And it's like, of course, because wrestling's fake and stupid. Should we just end it there? What a, what a soundbite! There has never been a movie I have watched in my entire life which has made me hate myself more. Wow. I'm ashamed that I'm even in the place at 41 years old where I would end up reviewing this movie for money. I would have thought I would have made it out of here by now. You know what I mean? I'm done. Well, everyone, hopefully we can do this again someday. Instead of suffering through the YouTube chat, click like and subscribe.